We go now to CNBC.com, where Facebook will disappear in five to eight years, semicolon, analyst. Right. Okay. These, you know, uh, people that have no credibility who have been analysts for the, the stock market, for the mainstream media outlets covering the stock market and American financial news really automatically should be dismissed out of hand. But this is kind of a fun one that I want to get into. Most of this is, is financial propaganda. This is Katie Thompson who wrote this piece. And now it seems that they are turning on Facebook for some reason. There are, uh, well, I don't know, for some reason. And there are people that have an interest in the failure of Facebook financially, or at least the depression of its stock value. And I just want to bring this up because while I, I kind of agree with this, it's, it's sort of for the wrong reason and on the wrong timeline. Facebook will lose dominance. As a major web company in less than a decade, Eric Jackson, founder of Iron Fire Capital, said Monday on CNBC Squawk on the Street. Again, the propaganda language here, we're citing someone and presenting it as fact and turning our sentence around so we state their fact and then say, Eric Jackson said, as opposed, and it's, it's so buried here, but the, 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 the lead of the sentence, Facebook will lose dominance as a major web company in less than a decade, comma. Anytime someone writes something like this and puts it out this way, just I mean, I, I hate to go over this over and over again, but this is where your propaganda detectors need to go up and start spinning wildly. So here's the quote. In five to eight years, they are going to disappear in the way that Yahoo has disappeared. Yahoo is still making money. It's still profitable. Still has 13,000 employees working for it, but it's 10% of the value that it was at the height of 2000. For all intents and purposes, it's disappeared. Jackson said there have been three generations of web companies. The first generation was big web portals such as Yahoo, where content was aggregated in one place. The second was the social web with Facebook. And the third generation is companies focused entirely on monetizing the monetary platform, something Facebook will continue to to struggle with. Um, this is kind of bullshit to begin with. Three generations of web companies. And it's, it's interesting to note that th there have been phases in web companies, in the development of the internet. And yes, there was a point where the search engines, Google, Yahoo, there was a, there was a competition. There were others that, that have become insignificant now, the ones that, that we have forgotten. And Yahoo, uh, you know, as, as they say here, practically uh, having, having disappeared, it, I, I understand what he's saying, that yes, it, it has, relatively speaking, become irrelevant on the internet compared to what it was at its height when Yahoo was worth so much more in, you know, in, in 2000. But, but this phasing is really narrow. I mean, this is implying that, that when social networks came to be that search engines and big web portals went away and that's absolutely not true if anything google is just as is uh, more dominant than, than it was in the past in terms of search engine dominance although someone's going to call me out and, and point to some statistics about this but whatever my point is they, they didn't go away the way that yahoo shrank uh, w was because it didn't focus on th that core search function and, and came to do a lot of other things. As, the, as, as they point out, they still have 13,000 employees. That's a, that's a huge company. So their role, unfortunately, was redefined to something much more narrow, where they are a portal. But they didn't, they didn't go away, and that service hasn't disappeared and will always be a part of the Internet. Now, this, uh, he says the second was the social web with Facebook. Well, of course, MySpace and now Twitter. And it suggests that this is a generation that is going to shift into the third generation, a mobile platform, as if that's a distinct phase. And there is a trend of increasing mobile usage of technology, and who knows, perhaps eventually the entire concept of, of, of a keyboard and, and monitor-based system will go away when the same technology is available in the space of a contact lens and you just wear your computer and your eyeball like it's nothing. You know, that's the kind of stuff that's coming. It's really exciting to think that all of these exponential technology curves are accelerating, accelerating. You know, as, as much as you feel overwhelmed by technology now in 2012, what's coming is going to rush by so fast. If you blink, it's like you're going to miss everything that has happened thus far in human history and technological development. When it happens just in the next five to ten years, we will have as much development with, within our lifetimes, far more technological development within our lifetimes 
than the whole of human history combined. So just, uh, I mean, be ready for it. It's exciting. But here specifically back to Jackson's analysis. The third generation is companies focus on entirely mobile or entirely on mobilizing the mobile platform. Well, that doesn't mean that social networking goes away. Like this is, and this is the thing Facebook will continue to struggle with. If Facebook wanted to charge a dollar for a download of their app on the app store on, on, on the Apple store, like it'd be no problem. If they wanted to put up ads, there's no ads on the Facebook mobile pages now. If they just simply put the top banner ads like there are on so many other applications, it doesn't change their competitive advantage as being the social network, but that's what's going to change. Back to Jackson, quote, when you look over these three generations, no matter how successful you are in one generation, you don't seem to be able to translate that into success in the second generation, no matter how much money you have in the bank, no matter how many smart PhDs you have working for you. Look at how Google has struggled moving into social. I think Facebook is going to have the same kind of challenges moving into mobile. There's no basis for this. He's just making assertions from observations without actually checking the cause and effect here. Google struggled moving into social. If, if, if you said that that was going from the first phase to the second phase, it was the launch of a completely separative, separate competitive social network with Google Plus. And Facebook is gonna have this, as you say, Facebook is gonna have the same challenges moving into mobile. See, that's not what's gonna kill Facebook. And this goes back to the regulatory filing that was released uh, before the Facebook IPO, where they said that we we couldn't we weren't they weren't actually monetizing as effectively mobile usage, and they're presuming that more people will, will go to using Facebook on their mobile phones and their mobile devices on on iPads rather than. Um, from a home computer where the advert there's, there's simply more real estate on the screen and there's more room for those targeted ads that have made Facebook so much money. And as it said, that uh, the growing number of mobile users using Facebook is hard to monetize and, quote, may negatively affect our revenue and financial results. Okay, so it might mean that the actual corporation of Facebook is less financially profitable for the time being. But this doesn't hurt their dominance. This might shrink the company in terms of the actual income, but it doesn't change their dominance as the social network. But I'll tell you what will, and that's open source social networking. That's the next phase change. And that's what I think these short-sighted analysts fail to see is that, well, I mean, he, he was right about this, quote, the world is moving faster, it's getting more competitive, not less, and I think those who are dominant in their prior generation are really going to have a hard time moving into this newer generation. Facebook can buy a bunch of mobile companies, but they are still a big fat website, and that's different from a mobile app. So. He's right in that things are changing rapidly, that the technology is, in a way, coming in generations and going through phase changes, but, but, big however here, that's not what's going to kill Facebook. What's going to kill Facebook is the decentralization of social networking, things like diaspora. And I don't even know all that much about it. I just know that when the exodus comes, and there will be an exodus from Facebook, that's how it's going to happen. It's not going to be what we're seeing now, which is this slow chipping away of people that don't quite like the privacy complaints, because the main game is still on Facebook. But at some point, a clearly superior product is going to launch that is going to allow everybody in one click to move all of their Facebook data, all of their MySpace data, all of their Twitter data, all of whatever they want into a single open source social networking platform that's gonna be free of some central hub of control. So that's what's gonna kill Facebook. And who's to say when that's gonna happen? But really, it could happen at any point, at any time, when the technology, because the technology is there, it's a matter of programming, willpower, and how much Facebook is actually able to serve the needs of its customers to keep them from making that one click over to the next big thing that will assure their demise. But inevitably, inevitably, a central authority over the social network that is the interwebs cannot be maintained, and yes, Facebook will die.